Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, Mindfulness Coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your Mindfulness Coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Um, this has been... A different week. Uh, I wrote a whole. This is a week. I would say, I went raw diggity. I just went raw with everything, <laughs> from the post I made a couple of days ago because I went to the emergency room this past weekend to the video I shot the other day. It was all just completely out there. So I want to talk about my emergency room experience on the podcast. That those that didn't read my story, but. <laughs> So I went to the emergency room the other day because I was having some issues with you no know, testicles. I, I could say manhood, but let's put it out there, okay? The point, point we really put it out there is that everybody that has pain somewhere in their body should, if they have insurance, go to the hospital or go to the doctor, get checked out. You don't know what the hell is happening. So at the emergency room this weekend, unlike what the media says, it was not busy at all. I got a bet right away, so I, I went there. Did the check-in process. They took my vitals. Boom, I was in the room waiting for the doctor. So the issue being is I was having um, testicular pain and, you know, pretty much my balls. That's that's basically to to say it. (laughs) And um, it was like, it was excruciating when I peed. It was excruciating when I went to the uh, bathroom. It was just, it was very uncomfortable. Now those, I'm going to get to the point, it's not STD. So you will say, well, you may have gone to chlamydia. Uh, no, and, and it's negative, the test. So I put that out there right away because that's what people are thinking. Burns VP, you have an STD. I do not have an STD. Never had an STD. I'm good to go. So I got a bed. I tell the doctor, a PA, uh, physician assistant, this is my problem. Um, I tell him that, you know, that I'm having pain. First thing I do is, oh, are you having any you know, discharge? No, what is that? Okay. Or, or are you having any lesions on your 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 balls or your your penis. I'm like, no. So then he says, okay, you know, I do a physical exam. They do a physical exam. Oh, I don't see nothing. What's going on here? And they obviously lay on my stomach. They want to test my abdominal region to see if I have any pain there because it could be, you know, gallbladder issue or whatever. Then it says they want to do a urine test. So, you know, go pee in a cup, right? Those out there know what the drug test is. It's the same thing. Pee in a cup. And I said, wait. So the first uh, about an hour goes by, about an hour and a half goes by. The nurse comes in and says, well, UTI results back negative. That's good news. She says, well, the doctor also ordered um, ultrasound. So sh- great. And obviously, so we, before I even went to the hospital, I called my um, my primary care physician, not there this weekend. I called 24 hour nurse hotline, told my symptoms. She's like, go to the emergency room right away. All right. So immediately from there, I Google everything. And Google tells you it can be UTI. It can tell you have a tumor. You have a twisted testicle. I don't know the actual scientific name of it, but twisted means they're wrapped around each other. One's cut off blood flow, so they could be dying. So I go to hospital. So the reason I do the ultrasound is to check for those because I'm nervous about having a tumor or a twisted testicle. Guess what, everybody? Negative. No twisted testicle. 
no UTI. Nurse comes in and says, okay, same thing, no tumor, no twist testicle. You know what? You, you know, it may be an STD. I'm like, what STD? Okay, well, let's, let's find out. I mean, I don't know what the hell is going on now at this point. The nurse finds out that takes three days. Okay. <laughs> so I got in, I checked in about 1 30 p.m. I get down about 5 45. Doc comes in and says, Well, we found no problem. So I said, Doc, what could it be? He says, I don't know. I said, Could it be rough sex? He says, Yes. I said, Could it be stress? He says, Yes. I said, Could I be worked out too hard? He says, Yes. They didn't check for a hernia. I didn't have those. All right. So we don't know. It's give me a prescription for ibuprofen, which you can take over the counter, which is Advil or, or Motrin in a generic ibuprofen. I did that, pain went away. So I, I, since I'm new to Bellingham, I need to get a PCP anyways, primary care physician. So I finally found one. I made an appointment for this Thursday, which is today. So here we go again. They have my test. I go in and I'm talking to the lovely lady. I had a, a female doctor. Or I don't care if it's male or female. I see help, right? So I don't prefer either one. Tell my symptoms that I'm having pain urination, pain when I ejaculate, uh, pain when um, you know, I touch my testicles, um, just pain, right, in that region. So she says, um, well, your results here say, yeah, no UTI. I got your results back. Again, no STD, right? So I, I know why all these doctors and nurses are hopping on, oh, you must have STD. Not everybody has pain, pain. This happening in gonorrhea, chlamydia, okay? Let's face that. Not everybody that has that uh, problem may have an STD. But I had a very lovely, ni nice nurse, and it's called, I was diagnosed with prositis, P R O S T A T I T I S. I may need to. Uh, <laughs> prositis, prositis. <laughs> P R O prostatitis. Prostatitis. I'm getting yes, tongue. P R O S T A T I T I S. So you can Google it. Prostatitis, I think. Prostatitis. Prostatitis. You said prostatitis. Prostatitis is what she said. So I'm going with prostatitis. Okay. It's easiest, but I can tongue twist it. Yeah, it is. It's I got diagnosed with that. And pretty much what it is is that she again did a physical exam of my genitals. Even inside, the, even inside the penis, the urethra too, nothing, no discharge, no fever, no nothing. It's basically what it is, is that I had a UTI and somehow, you know, during that process, my prostate, I had a prostate exam and a prostate exam is when they stick two fingers up your anus. Okay. It's nothing wrong with that because if I had cancer, you want to know right away. So don't be afraid of that. Men out there, we do need to be checked. I don't like, mm -hmm. oh, I'll go away, I'll be checked. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't be in shame and getting help. So I did the uh, prostate exam. And obviously with that, you feel some discomfort and pain, but they're very, you know, doctors and nurses, they're, they're okay with the kind of stuff. And that's what I got diagnosed with. So I'm, I'm on antibiotics and it should hopefully go away in a couple of weeks. And I did another urine test because what happens, doctors only test what they think it might be. Right, especially if you go to hospital, they don't test what it might be. They don't have time to be testing for a hundred different things. But when you go to your primary care physician, that's why doctors always say when you go to hospital, contact your primary care physician to establish care and establish treatment because they don't have time to be testing for every single thing. They test a UTI right away in the hospital because they want to figure out if that was the problem and treat it right away because it can lead to worse and worse infections. So I got I'm on these uh, antibiotics right now. I'm gonna take the next three weeks and hopefully it should get better. Mm -hmm. So that is my biggest event in my life at this moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's really happening. And the point of me telling this story is I want to be raw. I want to be out there. I want to know that it's no shame in having pain. We don't think it should be. Um, mm -hmm. You know, women get UTI and I never heard of a man getting UTI infection up until I researched and found out. So I was totally oblivious that men get UTI. So, you know, and it's nothing, it's okay. But men out there, anybody, if you're feeling discomfort, doesn't seem right, book that appointment, write down what you're feeling. Because pain can fluctuate. Oh, I don't feel pain in the morning. I feel pain at night. I feel pain when I wake up. I feel pain when I pee out. Whatever it's happening, write it down when it's happening. Get on the horn which that means get on your phone, call your doctor and says, look, these are the pains I'm recording. 
this is what's happening. Because the doctor doesn't know what to do. All they can do is go based upon what you're saying and diagnose based upon what you're saying. So having a quick log or, or whatever it may be of this pain um, will be the best way to remember every single thing. Because when you're sitting in front of the nurse or doctor, you're trying to think back, how does it feel? What's the rate zero to one when this happens? If you had a notebook like I should have done, then you can say exactly what the pain rate is, exactly what it happens, what time it happens, then it can give you a more precise diagnosis. But then again, like I said, this is diagnosis. So if it doesn't go in three weeks or it gets worse, it might be something else going. Mm -hmm. So get tested, whatever it is, um, and take care of yourself. You only got one body and one life. And don't be ashamed, guys. Get out there and get it done. You know, that's good that um, you're putting this out there also and giving all the other men advices because I, I think it's pretty much well known that men are usually not very good at going to doctors or they wait till the last minute. But I can't speak for every man or men in general, right? Just, just from what I've heard and from just some guys that I know. Usually, they usually wait till later to, to, to go to the doctor and be seen because um, uh, some are usually trying to toughen it out, right? Like it's just a sing, it's just a small pain, it'll go away, or maybe I just pulled a muscle, it'll go away, you know. So, the uh, good my, thing my is, my dad was one of those, one of those kind of guys. He was like, Oh, dad, she the doctor, and he's oh, no, I'll, I'll take some, uh, let's take some, some Tylenol, it go away, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna get see? worse. It will. And the next thing you know, it's just, it's worse than you, you, worse than you thought. And maybe it was something that you could have caught uh, in the beginning, right? Rather than waiting till later. And then, yeah, it's, uh, that's the thing about this with um, some of the guys out there. So, so good for you. Um, glad that, you know, it, I, I'm sure it was a, a scare for you also. And it was probably nerve wracking. The, the hardest thing about that is like it, you know, when you're waiting for the results too, you're sitting in the hospital waiting for the results. It's like, you know, it's like that waiting game. That's always the, the most stressful part of it. Um, because all these things are going in your head, you know, but, uh, yeah. So good thing. Um, I'm glad that everything is, has gotten better and it's just, you know, it, it could have been worse. Right. You know, and, when you went back to results, I mean, you're racking your head. What could it be? What cannot be? I hope it's not this. And what I did is I sat in that, that hospital bed, downloaded a game on my phone. I don't play games. Download a game on my phone and start playing this knife throwing game. That's all I did. <laughs> Just so that way I'm not worried about what it could be. Mm-hmm. Getting worried about what it should be. I hope it's not. Just let it, let it flow, right? I mean, I'm quite sure the pain I was having. I'm quite sure I probably was having small pains like this, which I think back, as I said, logbook, I probably was having small pains like this, like the increased urination, you know, especially at nighttime. Then all of a sudden it started getting worse and it starts getting worse. And it's like to go to see a doctor. It probably was already giving me signs of that. I just was ignoring it mm-hmm. up until that. Well, this is, this is weird. I got to go to see a doctor and I'm going to be a typical old man, especially, you know, black man. Don't go to the doctor. I don't understand why the hell black men do not go to the doctor and get checked out. Don't you have insurance? If you don't, get the Obamacare or whatever it is out there and get yourself checked out. I mean, the insurance to me is another thing I can't hate. I hate. So you get prescribed medication and sometimes your insurance doesn't cover it or it's extremely expensive. It's like I'm required by law to have insurance. So why is my insurance covering what I need? These are what I need to feel better, be mentally or physically. Uh, it doesn't cover this. Let's cover that. So I had to download this thing called Good RX. Mm-hmm. There's two prescriptions that weren't covered by my insurance. I have to pay out of pocket. So I downloaded Good RX to get a, a discount to get a prescription I actually need. Well, you have learned a lot. <laughs> you learned a lot throughout the week. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, my dad, if I recant from my mom's stories, was having issues my age. But he never go to the damn doctor. He just wouldn't go get his blood pressure checked. Wouldn't get on a proper diet, um, wouldn't get the things just, you know, routine, just blood pressure check, mm-hmm. blood drawn, see what's going on your cholesterol, what's going on your kidneys, your livers, things you cannot see, right? Mm-hmm. You'll wait till you have an issue and you go to a doctor. It's like tooth pain, right? Yeah. I have tooth pain. She will get you, she routinely getting your teeth checked annually so you don't have this kind of issue that show up. So, black men, men, 
get your shit checked, please. Yeah, I, I think it's it's um other. It, it, I don't want to say all guys again, but you know, it's not just black men. I think it's you know, there's others out there too that are um that are like that. They they just wait till the last minute till they feel something really really bad or that something that they couldn't handle anymore. But I think, you know, you're right. Once you start to feel something and you don't think and you think it's unusual or you start feeling weird, just go get a check already because you'll never really know. I mean, I know there's women out there that does the same thing. Um, I've learned my lesson on that. Um, you know, just don't wait till the last minute. Just just go to the doctor and get a check. I mean, it's it's not going to hurt, right? It's an, What's the worst thing that can happen? You get found out immediately. That's the worst thing that can happen. Oh, because what if I had a twisted testicle? One was dying, and I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And then I waited, and I can have it, it could have died in my body. Now, my body is full of toxins and all this kind of mess starts happening. Good thing mm -hmm. I went and got checked out. I don't have it, so I'm good to go. Um, I did, uh, I wanted to mention this, I did get a lot of backlash about me posting about my private parts, I guess it would say, on social media from different people. Uh, that will be a video. I'll be interviewing somebody about that. So those out there listening, go to my YouTube channel, Ron Johnson Life Coach. You will see the video. It's not there yet, but we'll come because, you know, while I'm thinking I'm putting my stuff out there to help, some people may, that close to me may say, oh, I'm, I'm offended. I, I can't believe you did this. This this be private. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to be wow. private. I've got one life to live. So yeah. you will see the video. Wow. Why is a wow? video of you being interviewed? No, I'm me and this other person being interviewed. I'm not gonna allow I'm not gonna allow say who it is. I'm not gonna say what's gonna be said. I'm yeah. gonna say go to the channel and watch it because it will be there. Uh, because I'm gonna give this person a chance to tell their side of the story why they were so upset and uh yeah. Yeah. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm raw diggity at this point. <laughs> well, you know what? I think, you know, I think that's a, another thing too is, you know, with well, being um, a public figure too, these are the things that you kind of, you're not surprised and or, or I wouldn't be surprised, right? That if you lay it all out there and you kind of open yourself up to the public, there will be somebody out there and there will be people out there that will not like what she put out. And there are some that will be appreciative of, you know, of you sharing, sharing your life or sharing what you do, um, sharing your experiences. And yes, there will also be people that might be offended by it, but it's, it's expected. I think, I believe it is. You can't make everybody happy. <sighs> I, I want to answer that question, but I'm, I'm going to go around it and go around it. The person I expected not to react certainly did. And I'm leaving it at that. That's it. I, I can't, I'm not going to say nothing. You got to watch the video. I will be shooting a video. It will be on YouTube. It will be on my social media, Ron Johnson Life Coach. It will be on my business page on Facebook, RJ Mental Life Coaching. I, I just don't want to say anything else. Just watch the video when it's posted. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're better and you're feeling better and uh, antibiotics should should help. It better help. <laughs> I go back again. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, uh, you know, so the good thing is you're good. You're okay now. I'm awesome. So that's wonderful. And thanks for sharing. Oh, always. You know, I, I have no problem not not sharing. I love to share. You know, I, I've learned that. I mean, it if that's what you want to do and you love to share, um, that's where you you know that makes you happy. Why not, right? I've I've recently just realized this. Um, someone had asked me this question recently, which made me really really think that what is my mission, right? I'm like, what do you mean? What's my mission? What's your mission this year? What do you want to accomplish? Can it, does it have to be just this year? Can it just be like, what's really my mission in life? 
And um, that took me a while to answer, but I realized that my mission, I know what I've realized what I really want to do and what my mission is. So, and I, I saw this somewhere also that made sense to me. When you die, I'm going to talk about death a little bit. Okay. You have a tombstone, right? On your tombstone is just the date of what? Of your birth date and the day that you died. So you're remembered on the day that you that you were born and the day that you died. What happens in between? So the most important thing is the dash, which is in between the day that you were born and the day that you die, right? The dash is the most important thing because everything that happened in between is what matters most. So what that is, is what do I want to be remembered by or at by people? So what I'm going to do in between the day that I was born and before I, or when, before I died, whatever, what I do now and here on now until the end of my life is what will really matter. And what that will be is I realize I want to really make an impact. I want to remem- be remembered for who I am and what I've done and what I did for people. Mm. right not so much more on okay um let's say i was uh i don't know just an example maybe oh i was in let's say i was a a female ceo making this much money am i really going to be taking that to the grave is that really how i want to be remembered am i really going to be taking all this money to the grave You know what? In the graveyard, that dash, say on the tombstone or whatever you guys, whoever does what, be it the bare people or creamy people, that dash. I never met someone that has come back from the grave. And if someone that did come back from the grave, would they have the same memories they died with? Same knowledge, same experience? Maybe not. Or maybe so. Who knows, right? Mm -hmm. But you're right about that. The difference between a rich man and a poor man when they die are exactly the equal. Like when Steve Jobs died, he wished he had more time. He had all the money in the world, but he could not buy more time, buy more life. So would you rather live a life that's meaningful or life fantasized? Would you rather make the impact while you're still alive or wait to a specific time, a date in this universe somewhere when it's right? Or would you want to do it now between that dash because there's a the beginning, we know when you're born, we know when you die, whenever that is. But in between is a wealth of time, a wealth of growth, a wealth of helping, a wealth of a lot of abundance in between. So, what life do you want to live? That's a very good question. What life ask, do you want to live, right? I'm asking you what life oh, do you want me, to live. Oh, me? You're asking me? <laughs> I thought you were talking to the listeners. I want to live the life I'm living now. And what life is that? <sighs> the life I'm living now is I'm living with, I think I'm living in my purpose right now. And I I, I know that I'm going to keep this going and I'm not going to stop. So this is the life that I want to live, which you know, at this point, I would call it like maybe this is like me living my best life ever. You know, I was I was a little kid once. I've lived my best life when I was a little kid because when I was a little kid, I was happy with everything that I was doing. I wasn't worried about anything. I wasn't worried about what people are going to say. I wasn't worried about, you know... I, I have to act a certain way because people might not like me for who I am or for the way I was acting. When you were a little kid, you were able to just do all that without any worries because you, you're you your own little five-year-old, four-year-old you were, you know, at that at that age, you weren't worried about anything. So at that, that age, you were living your best life. So why can't I just live my best life now, right? So I think that's what I, I, I'm doing is, you know, I'm going to live the life that I want to live and after that, hearing that and 
having being asked that question made me really realize that what really matters is what happens between in between those two dates. And that would be the dash in between, which is the life I'm living right now. And making this impact, making an impact and making a difference to the people and in the world is, is what I want to be remembered by. And that is making people happy. So I may be making them happy by sharing my stories to them or by helping them in any other way or in certain way. I would. Why not? Why not? Yeah. And it could just be as simple as, you know, I may have said something. It could just be like one word that I've told somebody that would leave a mark in them. And it could just be a smile that I did when I smiled at somebody that would leave a mark in them. And I know that um, I have had, you know, others out there who had told me some things, you know, and, and, and I'm really, really, I really appreciate those who's come up to me and, and share, you know, their feelings towards me. And sometimes you just don't realize you may not do, be doing anything. You're just minding your own business and you're living your life that you're actually inspiring somebody already just being the way you are. I didn't realize I'm inspiring somebody just you know, one time being at a at a bar and just dancing and minding my own business with my friends and we're just having fun. I didn't realize just doing that on my own and not caring what, not caring about everybody else around me. And, you know, they might look at me like, why is she dancing like that? Or why is she acting like that? I'm just being me. I didn't realize that we're inspiring somebody just being like that. Well, if you ever notice a point like that, <clears throat> Next time that happened, what you want to bring to your attention is, are you in touch with your higher self? Because at that moment, when you were dancing on the dance floor, you were not taking care of the world. You were not worried about anything. You were not holding back. You just being a free spirit. Mm -hmm. And look how much joy you were creating out of just being a free spirit. It's fun. People come up to you and say, dude, what, what are you doing? Let me join you. You know, and, and that's what that's what's about reaching the higher self. Things that don't require much of a thought. They just kind of manifest on their own. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I may never see this person again, but I left a mark in this person in some ways. And then that's exactly that I've realized that's what I want to do. That is the kind of difference I want to make in the world. And that's just being you. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, just you being you, your true authentic self, because again, um, just being yourself and just being authentic, you really don't know how much people out there are you're inspiring and that, that can also help them come out and just, you know, start being their authentic self. Hell Yeah. You're putting a light in their life, basically. And that's what we are here for. Who I am and where do I belong is a question of lifetimes. And that question isn't a question that gives you a specific answer or a specific date or gives you everything you should be knowing the rest of your life. The answer to that question lies within. And the answer to that question is, what are you doing now, today, to be in touch with your higher consciousness or higher self? And what are you doing to the universe to bring a more abundance of happiness? You know, most of the time, all of us want to do something in order to get something in return. Well, if I do this, I get this return. Well, if I do a good deed, something will happen to me. And I realized those things are still attachments to something. I'm only going to give because I know I will receive. And that comes from a mindset of a lack. If you give just to give without expecting receiving or expecting the universe to grant you something grandiose because you gave is when you truly find out who you are and where you belong. Mm. That's, that's the biggest thing to life. 
And I now finding who I am and where I belong and it's within. And this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Helping people, exploring myself, being raw, getting out there, sharing my truth, owning my story. That's what people want to see. I, I was talking to, uh, I went to Jim this morning. Jim's open here finally in Washington. And I was talking to one of the receptions up front. Um, you know, she follows me on my YouTube channel. And uh, she said, I really like your content. And I said, so oh, what's really missing? She says, you know what? I really like stuff that people are real. I'm tired of influencers. Because it's not real. It's not authentic. It's not what people want to see. Mm-hmm. And you can see in this, in this world turned with this COVID thing going on, creating abundance around real, meaningful relationships is actually what we've been missing the whole time. We're creating these auth- unauthentic relationships, unauthentic jobs that we don't want to be at, um, caught up with where we should be because someone else is doing better than which, which, what we, we are doing at the present or what you're doing at the present moment. And that's where you start getting lost. But now because of COVID, now you've got a chance to sit back and realize, wait a minute, what are my real friends or what are real people? Who do I want to connect with or who's going to support me when I need help or, or support me when I'm down or support me when I have depression, anxiety? That's, that's the key there. Mm-hmm. It's a connection. And really, a lot, a lot of it now, it's just, you know, connecting within yourself. And when you do, you connect more with with people out there and and this is exactly what people really want to see and it's true people want to see more real like the real you mm-hmm. uh, and and i think you know um that person's right it's we're just tired of i mean i'm i'm not gonna say we i'd say probably me i'm not i don't want to speak for everybody i get tired of seeing fake stuff I get tired of, you know, people being fake around me or with me. And you can tell. You can tell if they are. But the more authentic you are, the more you attract. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it you really do. And then you end up surrounding yourself more with with pe- real people around you or those who are real, are real and, and they need that. And when you open up like that, you open up to the world, you help somebody else open up and then kind of, and then they end up being in touch with themselves. And like I said, you put a light in their life and you know what, this is what you're going to be remembered by. You're going to be remembered by as Ron, who's be who's been raw, who's been <laughs> authentic, you know, that's what you're going to be remembered by. That's what you're going to be remembered by around the world. People who's watching your videos or, you know, who's who's seeing this, um, your YouTube channels, you know, they may not make any comments and say anything, but you are making a difference already. And they're already remembering who you are. And words get around. It could just be them talking to somebody. Hey, you know what? You should watch this guy on his video. He talks about this. And you're you're helping somebody else somewhere out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Someone else is going to benefit. Mm -hmm. But this is what we do, and this is who we are, and this is why we do what we do. Because we want to reach out. We want to reach those that don't know where to turn. Reach those that may not have hope. Reach those that need to be inspired. Reach those that want to live a better life. Reach those that wish they can do whatever they want to but can't. Right. It's all about... Mm-hmm. And that's and the people just, we're going to reach. Yeah, and just letting them know also that you know you're not alone. There's somebody else out there that who's who's going through the same situation as you are, or who's gone through it. Right now, you putting yourself out there about this, somebody is just somebody just realized he's not alone. Isn't that surprising? But you will have more love than more hate. And those who hate, they don't really hate you. I I think I, I'm I'm realizing that, you know, I feel like sometimes I feel like sometimes um when I get hate or when I get like I don't like, 
it's not that they really don't like what I say or what I put out there or maybe too open or, you know, I, it's weird for some people. I don't think it's that. I think it's more like maybe they want to be that. Maybe they want to get there too. They just don't know how. I think it's a little bit different. Sometimes if someone hates is because you triggered something that they say they want to do or they trigger some inside them. That's part of the value system. Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to say. I just couldn't really explain it well. Maybe that's what it is. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you got me. You understand what I'm trying to say there. But I think that's what it was. And like I said, at the same time, it's like they want to make those changes also, but maybe just in denial about it. Mm -hmm. They sure do. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, not well, everybody can have the same awakening we had, and not everybody can have it at the same time. So we have an hours here, and someone else will have theirs tomorrow, and it's always happening around us. Mm -hmm. It's because we started to get to the point where we want this awakening. We want these different things to manifest in our life. When we start searching for, we start becoming part of that. We start opening up more to the universe, and that's where the magic is. is we, when we start opening up more and realizing how we can change our lives within, things start to come our way unbeknownst to us. And exactly things are just showing up what they should and, be. Yeah. And it has to come from you first too. You, you'd you have to want it. You have to want to make those changes and you'd have to want to, um, you know, learn more about yourself and, re and connect more within yourself. Oh yes. That's most definitely. And you'd have to want to do, to do the work because it does take some work. It takes a lot of work mm -hmm. and it continues to be work and it won't stop and it will keep coming until you die. Yeah. If you want it, it will keep coming and you got to experience every moment with joy because every experience has value regardless how you look at it. It's a continual progress is how I see it. And only up and never down. So continue progress to becoming better and getting better. And with that said, I want to say this has been lovely. This has been an amazing awakening in the last two weeks from hiring a spiritual coach to um, have his experience with my testicles. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, you know, it was up hey, to you know what? At balls. this point, all you can do is just laugh about it, right? <laughs> That's the best I, way. I just, I don't, I don't know if I really care. It's just, it is what it is, and you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> and that's the nice I can say about it. Um, at least the sci testicles are scientific, so you can look it up. You can. So I want to say thanks, guys. It's been a wonderful time sharing my story. Hope I help a lot of people out there and and help them be just raw and be in that moment like I'm doing right now on this podcast and in my stories. And thank you for allowing me to share with you. And again, thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Ronald Johnson, your mindfulness coach. Yes. And again, thanks, Ron, for, um, for sharing your story um, to us and being as raw. I feel like saying raw, like raw. <laughs> being as raw as you can be, it, it takes a lot of courage. It really does. And for you to be brave to even have this posted and have it on your YouTube, it does take a lot of courage. So congratulations on that. And again, thank you for um, sharing your story. And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Gloria, your mindfulness coach. And don't forget, those that want to be a guest or make a comment, we'd love to share it here. You can email us at lifesashuffle at gmail.com. Or more importantly, follow our Facebook page at Life's a Shuffle on Facebook. Subscribe. You get the daily content and things you need to hear on a regular basis. Thanks again for listening.